Hi there, my name's Tom and I asked Reddit users to tell me what their most embarrassing language learning stories were. And there were so many results, it was hilarious reading through all of these and I wanted to share some of them with you today. A lot of the Spanish ones do get very sex related very quickly though because of the difference between, I think, Spanish Spanish and Latin American Spanish. For example, Cochito would go kaboom, I think. Um, said in Spain the word coger, the verb coger, means to take, but in Latin America it means to fuck. So he says he accidentally ended up asking a waiter if he can fuck my food out in the patio. <laughs> Which I love, I mean I guess if you're a, a waiter in Latin America you kind of, maybe you expect to hear those sorts of things, but it must still be hilarious just being caught off guard, being said, can I fuck my food in the garden please? <laughs> That's good. Um, but I'm learning French at the moment, so I'm going to pick a French one next. Um, Diabolical Potato, which is a name that's much more easy to say. Diabolical Potato says he accidentally told a vineyard owner that the wine was dégoûtant when he meant délicieux, which is disgusting and delicious. And I guess the way I hold words in my head, I tend to hold the two opposites next to each other, you know, and you kind of reach for the, the appropriate side of that oppositeness. So it's actually surprisingly easy to think that something is delicious and say it's horrible. But just because it's French doesn't mean you can't accidentally make sex references just like you can in Spanish. So Team Rocket Grunt Josh says, I told my French teacher while I was in Quebec, j'ai commandé de la putain rather than poutine. <laughs> and that's saying I ordered some, I don't know, how do you translate putain in a way that I can put on YouTube, I don't know. <laughs> poutine is the, is the Canadian food, it's like chips and gravy and stuff like that. And putain is kind of like fuck, I guess, but it's more literally like, like whore, I think, is what the literal translation is, but you use it to mean fuck, basically. So j'ai commandé de la putain is like, I ordered a fuck. <laughs> or I ordered a whore, I don't know, it's horrible. Okay, this next one's quite sweet from Primhov. He says, maybe not hyper embarrassing, but once I was trying to comment that my parents' dog barks too much. Parents? Why don't you speak the language of your parents? I assume, I assume, I assume this is a host family or something. Um, trying to comment that my parents' dog barked too much. Um, and to bark is at skala in Swedish, sorry for pronunciation, and instead managed to say it was gossiping too much. At skralva? I do not speak Swedish, I'm afraid, so that is awful accent, but I can see how those are very similar. At skala? At skralva? Something like that? If you're Swedish, leave me a comment and tell me how awful my pronunciation is, but I love the idea of somebody going and be like, you know your dog is gossiping an awful lot. It would get the, it would get the point across at least, that's good. Gossiping, barking, yeah. But after that deviation into the sort of nice sweet mistakes, let's go straight back into the gutter. Violently Gay says, in my first two weeks of Japanese, my hiragana was still a little clunky, so I accidentally read shinu to die as shine, which means go fuck yourself. I love that those two are so close to each other in Japanese. Anyway, he goes on, I said this super confidently to my professor, who fortunately realised that I just misread a character. And the characters do look really similar, like, I mean, I don't speak any Japanese, I don't know what these characters are like at all, but if you showed me these two next to each other, I would... They look the same. Hey teacher, go fuck yourself. <laughs> so keeping with the Japanese theme now, Rox says, When I first arrived in Tokyo, I was looking for the bus station at the airport and went up to the information desk. With my very little Japanese knowledge, I asked lady, Eki deki masuka? Um, and with that she gave me the most puzzled look, and then I realised I had asked her, do you speak train station? <laughs> I quickly corrected myself to ego, which means English. <laughs> do you speak train station? <laughs> um, here's an English one from Nullaby. It says, I was talking about rap and I kept on saying rapist instead of rapper, which I can imagine would be awkward, but I can also see how you would get there. That R-A-P start and then is to turn it into like a profession or a, or a thing that somebody would do. I can see how that would, that would work. Okay, so I've told a bunch of stories of other people now, so let me tell one of my own, so at least I can join the ranks of, of embarrassment a little bit here. Um, is this time I went to this Belgian bar with my Airbnb host in Lyon. We turned up to this place and they had like hundreds of bottles of beer and like 10 different things on tap and I really wanted to confidently order what I wanted, like read the menu, really understand it and just kind of show off about how good my French was at this point. This is only about a month and a half in, by the way, into my French. So we're sitting down, the waiter comes over and he's speaking to Virgil, my host, and they're talking about it and they're throwing around some verbs that like sound really positive, using nice positive words and things like that. And they talk about this beer for a while, I can kind of tell they're talking about it, and then Virgil picks a, a slightly different one. But I'm like, right, okay, I understood that, I'm going to take this first one. And so I confidently say, I'll take this one please. At which point the waiter looks at me and goes, are you sure? And then Virgil looks at me like I'm mad, and I say, yes, yes, that's, that's the one I want. As soon as the waiter had gone, Virgil says, Tom, we've just spent about 10 minutes talking about how awful that beer is, how dreadful it is, and how no one could possibly order it. 
and I had completely missed it. Every time I heard the verb, I missed the negation on either side. And every time I heard an adjective or something, I didn't realize that they were using it ironically or something like that. And the next time the waiter came over, I made sure to speak quite loudly in English so that it was clear it was a language issue and not just like a general stupidity issue, basically. All right, I thought it was only fair to finish on one of my own. So, um, thank you very much for watching. Um, if you don't know who I am, by the way, my name's Tom and I'm traveling around France at the moment. I've been learning French for three months and embarrassing myself quite a lot. Um, I have another two months left to go though, so if you want to follow my trip and, and watch more of these videos, then uh, do subscribe. There'll be a button here on the, on the left. Um, anyway, click that to subscribe and I'll see you on the next video. Thanks for watching, guys. Cheers.